I will not show you traditional productivity tools such as to-do lists, time tracking, note taking apps. Instead, I will share how I use these apps and how I configure them for maximum productivity. I believe you will find it helpful. Let's get started. Dropdown terminal. A dropdown terminal is the best way to use a terminal in my experience. I just press the F12 key and I get my terminal. If I click anywhere outside the terminal window, it disappears. Thus, the terminal can be accessed quickly, it stays open all the time and all processes in the terminal stay active. I usually have multiple tabs open and I rename them for ease of navigation. In some cases, I can also split the screen of the current terminal window and continue working in one half while monitoring the processes in the other half. There are different apps that deliver this drop-down functionality of the Linux terminal. I use Yakuyak in the Plasma 5 desktop. You can try Guyak or Tilda terminal if you use a GTK-based desktop. In XFCE, you can actually use the default XFCE terminal as a drop-down terminal. Alias. There is one more thing that I think is essential if you are a terminal user. It's the alias command. With alias, you can create a shortcut for one command. For example, these are the aliases I use. There are some simple ones like the ls command. For example, if I need to list files as a list, I type double L instead of ls with option L. The same applies to the list all command. I could type ls with option A, but I can also type LA. There are also more complicated commands such as the SSH login command. I could type SSH with the options such as port number, then my username and the address of the server. Instead, I just type remote login and login to my remote server. I also use alias for mounting remote drives with SSH file system. The command is quite long as you can see, but I never have to type it. I just type remote mount and this one command is executed. You can create an alias shortcut for any Linux command and it will save you a lot of time. I have a dedicated video where I show how to create aliases in Linux. Check it out. Clipboard Manager A clipboard manager is another tool that I use virtually every day. It saves everything you copy or cut. If I need text, I copy it a few copy steps or even quite some time ago, I can open my clipboard, search for it and use it again in the paste command. I use Plasma file built-in clipboard manager, so it even saves files in the clipboard buffer. If you use any other desktop, you can have a look at CopyQ or Diodon clipboard managers. If you want to learn more about how to use Linux, please subscribe. The channel is very close to 100k subscribers, so I need your help. Powerful File Manager This is gonna be controversial. I believe Dolphin, the Plasma 5 file manager, is the most configurable and thus the most powerful file manager in Linux. Other file managers such as GNOME Files, Thuner or Nemo have some features that can improve your productivity, such as multiple tabs support, but they are inferior in the whole feature set. Let me explain by showing you my Dolphin file manager and how I use it. There are shortcuts to the most frequently used folders, including remote server folders, hard drives and my phone. There are also different icons for each folder that makes finding the right folder easier. At the top I have navigation buttons, back, forward, level up and refresh. I can also switch between icons, lists and detail view with one click. Moreover, Dolphin remembers the view style for each folder. So I can have my home folder in icon view, but my YouTube folder as a detailed list. In GNOME files you cannot do that. There is a button to enable preview and show hidden files. I can also open the terminal from any directory with one click. It's very useful for quick actions. I don't need to open my drop-down terminal and use the cd command. There is also a button to open new tab 
and get a split view. There is a dedicated video where I show how to configure Dolphin to have all these features. You can click on this card and I provide the link in the description as well. Email client. Surprisingly, there are still many users who use web browser to access their emails. Stop doing that and start using email client. First of all, you can combine several email accounts in one app and have them all at glance. Second, there is a shared address book. So if I have an email address I received to my personal email account, I can use it to write from my business email account. Third, you can have your calendar integrated into the email client. Moreover, you can combine several calendar accounts here. Fourth, with email clients, you can also save all emails locally. So you have a backup of all your emails in case you lose access to your online accounts. Finally, you have accounts from different email account providers, but the interface is always the same and familiar. You do not need to search how to mark spam or where that reply to all button. I use Thunderbird from Mozilla as my email client, but you are welcome to try any other app. For example, Evolution is very popular among GNOME users. AutoKey AutoKey is an app that can help you to automate repetitive tasks in your Linux desktop. I use it mostly for communication phrases. For example, I use this reply phrase for any request I get. It is mapped to RPL yes phrase. If I type RPL yes and press space in my email client, I get this phrase paste automatically. Then I just edit it a bit and send. I also frequently use an automatic phrase to decline offers. You can also try auto key scripts if you want to perform more advanced tasks than just inserting phrases, but it is beyond the scope of this video. Password Manager All of us have dozens if not hundreds of online accounts. You should never use the same password in two different accounts. But memorizing all passwords is impossible. That's where the password manager can help you. You need to remember only one strong password to decrypt all other passwords. Then you just select an account you need and copy paste the password. Password manager also helps you to generate strong passwords. As you can see, I have around 30 different categories of passwords and each of these categories has several if not dozens of accounts. So it saves me a lot of time. I use KeePass XC password manager. I'm not sure if it's the best right now. There is an auto type feature, but it doesn't work all the time. I have had this KeePass database for over 10 years now. So I'm afraid to switch to something else. Scribe. Scribe automatically creates step-by-step -step guides. It is a free Chrome extension. You just need to press the record button. Scribe will track what you are doing and generate screenshots, instructions and clicks into a guide like this one. It can be used to create a how-to guides from anything inside your Chrome browser. I create Linux tutorials. So I connect to my virtual Linux machine with ThinLink. I showed how to use ThinLink in one of my previous videos. Press the scribe record button and do what I want to create a tutorial from. For example, how to change the desktop theme in Ubuntu. I open Twix, go to appearance and change icons and shell theme. Close Twix and show how this theme looks like. Stop recording and a how-to guide is generated. You can adjust some steps by editing the comments. I really like this option to merge steps into an animation. I select the screenshots that I want to merge and an animation is created. When the guide is ready, I can easily share it by creating a link to it. I also often reuse these auto-generated screenshots and animations in my blog. There is an option to download each screenshot. I would like to thank Scribe for saving me a lot of time and for sponsoring this video. I leave the link to Scribe in the description. The Chrome extension is free to use. 
OBS Studio. Speaking about recording my videos, there is no better tool than OBS Studio. I configure it to record everything, my desktop, my webcam and my audio. If I need to record on this webcam, I can disable the screen recording with one click. The biggest advantage of the OBS Studio is its audio filters. It removes noise on the fly and processes my audio with a compressor. So I don't need to edit my audio after recording. In the past, I used simple screen recorder for desktop recording, Audacity for audio and GUC View for my webcam. Then I combined everything in KDN Live video editor. It was taking so much time. After I switched to OBS Studio, my productivity increased dramatically. VirtualBox This is not obvious, but there are ways you can use VirtualBox to save some time. Personally, I use it in three ways. First, even though I'm a full-time Linux user, occasionally I have to use Windows apps. For example, there are some document forms compatible with Adobe Acrobat Reader only, and I cannot edit them in Linux. In that case, I start Windows in VirtualBox and edit this document with Adobe Reader. Second, when I want to experiment with settings or try a new program, before doing it on my working machine, I test everything in my virtual system. I can go to the folder where the image of the virtual system is located, make a backup copy of it, and start experimenting. If everything goes fine, I can then switch to my host system and do the same what I did in my virtual system. If I break something, I know I should not try doing that in my main system. Then I just replace the image of the broken virtual system with a working backup copy. Third, if I want to try a new Linux distro, I do that in a virtual box. I install the system and create a backup of the image with the freshly installed system. Then I play around with the system. It is absolutely safe to experiment because it is a virtual system and you can very easily and quickly revert to a freshly installed system from a backup copy. There are many more tools and tips for productivity. I recommend you watch any of these videos that you see on your screen right now. They may help you to save some time while using Linux. Thank you for watching.